السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين رب العالمين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد جاءت رسلنا بإبراهيم بالبشرة قالوا سلاما قال سلام فما لبث أن جاء بعجل حنيف رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين يا رب العالمين Today's khutbah is dedicated to reminding us of something fundamental to our faith. Allah Azza wa Jal made, gave us many names for Islam. Islam is the most common name we use for our religion's name, the act of submitting ourselves peacefully before the will of Allah. But even that name has a history. Allah Azza wa Jal describes that Ibrahim alayhi salam was told to submit, aslim, every time Allah told to him, to submit peacefully, he said, Aslam to li Rabbil Alameen, I give myself in submission before the master of all nations and all people. When he was building the Kaaba, he asked Allah Azza wa Jal, Rabbana wa Jalna Muslimaini lak wa min Durriyatina Ummatan Muslimatan lak. Make our children Muslim before you. Make us Muslim, him and Ismail, and our offspring, there should be Muslims among them too. And Allah Azza wa Jal describes in Surah Al Hajj, Hua Sammakumul Muslimina min Qablu wa fi hadha. That ayah has two interpretations. Some say Allah has named us Muslim from a long time ago and even now. But some have also interpreted because the, uh, the phrase right before that is Millata Abikum Ibrahim. Huwa sammakumul Muslimina min qablu wa fi hadha. Ibrahim alayhi salam is the one who named you Muslims from much before and even now. So as a matter of fact, our name Muslim goes back to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And in another place, Allah Azza wa Jal describing the religion. The Arabic word for religion is actually Millah. He says, فَاتَّبِعُوا مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ Hanifa." Follow the religion of Ibrahim. Another name for Islam is actually the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So his legacy and the way Allah talks about him is very important for us because that's how we understand Islam itself. And so much of what we do, it's a short reminder for you why Ibrahim alayhi salam is so connected to our religion. You know, everybody here knows that there are five pillars of our faith. Bunya al-Islam ala khams. Islam is based on five fundamental pillars. Tawheed, the act of declaring la ilaha illallah, clearly goes back to Ibrahim alayhi salam who destroyed idols. When we, we perform hajj, that is actually only and only the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. When we give zakah, his son Ismail, Allah says about him, kana ya'muru ahlahu bis salati wa zakati. His son, meaning Ismail, learning from his father, used to tell his family to give zakah. Zakah goes back to Ibrahim alayhi salam. The, the establishment of the prayer, it's his dua. He said, Rabbi jalni muqima salati wa min dhurriyati. Make me the one who makes, establishes the salah. And of course, we establish the salah facing the qibla that Allah commanded him to build. So four out of the five pillars, you would think the only pillar of Islam that doesn't have to do with Ibrahim alayhi salam is the month of Ramadan, fasting. But even this is actually going back to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Because Ibrahim alayhi salam made dua for a messenger to come who will recite Allah's words. And that messenger is Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And those words came in the month of Ramadan. And the only reason we are fasting is because shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. The month of Ramadan is the one in which the Qur'an came down. In other words, the month of Ramadan is the one in which the dua of Ibrahim was answered. The dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam that a messenger should come and recite Allah's book was answered in this month. So even this month goes back to the, the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. All five of our pillars go back to Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is important to say because then the way we look at Ibrahim alayhi salam is not like any other prophet. As a matter of fact, even our messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam was told uh, you know, about him, فَاتَّبِعْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا You follow the religion of Ibrahim Hanifan. You know, even the messenger is being told to dedicate himself to the legacy of his father, Ibrahim alayhi salam. The reason I say this is because there are some places in the Qur'an where Allah azza wa jal describes the personality of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And everything about his personality becomes the personality of Islam itself. Everything Allah describes becomes the way we as Muslims think. For example, Ibrahim alayhi salam was concerned not only with one nation or one group of people, he was concerned with all of humanity. 
He was concerned with everyone. As a matter of fact, when he was building the, the, the Kaaba, he asked Allah Azza wa Jal that this should be a place make people's hearts flock towards the, you know, these people that are going to establish this house. So he was already inclined towards thinking about not just one nation, but all of humanity. And you know, our Messenger وسلم, is a mercy and a, and a blessing and an act of Allah's love and care for all of humanity. Rahmatan lil alameen. Now, the reason I say all of this is one particular place in the Quran describing something about Ibrahim alayhi salam. And the reason I want to share this with you is because we are a religion, Allah Azza wa describes this entire religion tying back to the notion of love and care. When Allah declared us an ummah, kuntum khaira ummatin, you, have, you are the best of all nations. You may have heard this before. Allah says you are the best of all nations. Khaira ummatin, ukhrijat linnas. Uh, the best of all nations that has been taken out, meaning a, se a selection has been made from humanity, you, each of you and me, have been especially chosen from among the people. Now usually when you make a selection, you say these are the best of the people. The best of the people. Allah didn't say that. He, he didn't say, أُخْرِجَتْ مِنَ النَّاسِ He said, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ You are the best of all people, chosen, taken out, for the benefit of people, not from the people, not, you're not the best of them, you are the best for them. It's a completely different meaning. Now the only thing that makes us the best is that we are good to other people. We're a benefit to them. And when Allah Azza wa Jal uses the word anas in the Qur'an, as a matter of fact, predominantly, when Allah uses the word people in the Qur'an, He's not even talking about Muslims. He's talking about those who don't believe. The ayah is then telling us that the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that follows the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam is actually been given this honor. And why have they been given this honor? Because they are the best suited to help the rest of humanity. To benefit the rest of humanity. In every possible way. We are supposed to be the best for the people. Ibrahim alayhi salam was visited by three angels. They come in the form of a human being. They come to his house. When he opens the door, he doesn't know them. He has no idea who they are. But they said, Salaman. They said, we, we come in peace. We don't mean harm. And he says, Salamun. He responds with a better salam, basically. Just like we say, Salamu alaikum, and somebody responds, Wa alaikum as salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salamun here refers to the fact that he made a better response to them. So he gives them a better salam and he invites them in. Even though he says, Qawmumun karun, I don't know you people, but it's okay, come in. Even this is important. Allah mentioned this for a reason. Allah is teaching us to be welcoming to those we don't even know. He doesn't know if they're Muslim or not even either. By the way, the salam today for us, salam means that somebody's Muslim. But salam back in the day, I come in peace, was a general saying. It didn't necessarily declare that somebody's a believer. So he says, I don't know you people, but come in. Since you have good intent, come on in. Now these people come and sit down, and Ibrahim alayhi salam hurries up to make food for them. Why? Because he assumes they're coming from a long distance, they're traveling, they must be in need. Ibrahim alayhi salam is sensitive that these people that are traveling, they didn't just, before they even ask, by the way, we were traveling, we got lost, we didn't know our way, could you help us with some food? That would be embarrassing because he doesn't want to put someone in the position of having to ask. So what does he do? He goes and starts preparing a meal without them even asking, on his own. And he hurries and does it. And so as he's hurrying and making this food, and he prepares this food and he gives it to them, he notices that they're not touching the food. They're not eating the food. And this is a little bit scary, because in ancient times, a lot of people don't know this, in ancient times, there used to be, even, even criminals used to have a code. So if somebody has come into your house to kill you, like an assassin has come to kill you, it is part of their honor that they will not eat your food. If they don't eat your food, by the way, if they eat your food, they can't kill you. So when he's about to give them food and they're not eating it, they're not, you know, their hands aren't going towards the food, he gets a little worried. He starts getting afraid. And they say, no, 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 no. We, we came here to tell you that you are going to have a boy. You're going to have a child. By the way, this, this idea of Ibrahim salam getting worried, it teaches us something also. We should be beneficial to people, but we should be careful of people too. 
we can't just be blindly just, you know, accept whatever. And somebody, somebody can say, can I come into your house? I need some help. And you don't, you can see a gun sticking out of the side. You don't just let them into the house. You know, if he sees the intention is a little bit wavering, he gets a little bit more careful. And they have to calm him down. No, no, no. We came on behalf of Allah and we came here to tell you that you're going to have a child. And his wife was very old, you know. His, his wife started actually laughing in the kitchen. She just burst out laughing and says, Ajuzun Aqim, old lady, please. How is she going to have a child? And then they explain that this is the command of Allah. But Ibrahim alayhi salam, the genius that he is, he knows that Allah does not send three angels to tell me about one boy. So he looks at them and he says, Ma khatbukum ayyuhal mursaloon. What are you really here for? You have been sent on a mission, al mursaloon, you have been sent. You didn't just get sent here to tell me that I'm going to have a baby boy. You were sent here for a particular reason. And they say, you're right. We were actually sent to the nation of Lut. And we're going to kill everyone there. Allah has sent us as the punishment on the nation of Lut. Illa, except for you know, the believers with him and some of his family. That's it. Everybody else is going to be destroyed, including his wife. That's what they tell him. Ibrahim alayhi salam First, you have to ask yourself, Allah could have sent angels directly to the nation of Lut without stopping at the house of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah could have sent different angels to the house of Ibrahim and different angels, the angels of good news to the house of Ibrahim and the angels of bad news to the family of Lut. Two separate things. But Allah's plan was to send these people first to the house of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then Allah's plan was to record that conversation between the angels and Ibrahim alayhi salam in the Qur'an. So we, you and I can read it. This is not an accident. This is on purpose. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he hears that these sinners are going to be killed. You know, I, before I tell you what happens next, I'll tell you, some people, they feel they're very, their Islam is very strong. And the stronger your Islam is, the more you should hate sin. And those who commit sin, we pray that Allah Azza wa destroys them. Ya Allah, punish those people that are committing sins and disobeying you and dammir home and qatil home and ahlik home and these kinds of du'as. I've even been in different parts of the world where, you know, in, in taraweeh and in, you know, in qunud, people are making du'a, they're making du'a against countries. You know, I, I came from America, I went to this one country, ya, ya Allahumma ahlik al-Amerikan, asqit ta'iratihim, and you know, Ya Allah, destroy the Americans, down their planes. And I'm standing in Salah going, mate, I got a flight in five hours. Please don't make this dua, you know. <laughs> but in some people's mind, <laughs> you know, the idea is that if we just make dua, that Allah destroys the enemy. And sometimes when people who are, you know, they don't, they, they commit sin. And they get, there's an earthquake somewhere. There's a flood somewhere. There's fire somewhere. You hear some Muslims say, Alhamdulillah, Allah is teaching them a lesson. You see Allah gave them an earthquake. You see how they got flooded. This is what they get for having casinos. This is what they get for having bars. This is what they get for being shameless. This is what they get. This is how Allah destroys them. And we're like, ah, takbir, Allahu Akbar. You feel good about yourself because somebody else got destroyed. Ibrahim alayhi salam just heard the nation of Lut is about to be destroyed. And you find the same Ibrahim, the same Ibrahim, when Allah told him, leave your family in the desert, he did it. The same Ibrahim, when Allah told him, slaughter your own child, he's ready to do it. The same Ibrahim, when Allah told him, jump into a fire, he's done it. That same Ibrahim, the angels came and told him, we are here to destroy the nation of Lut. Allah says, yujadiluna fi qawmi Lut. He started arguing with us to save the people of Lut. Don't destroy them. Please don't destroy them. And Allah Azza wa records the word mujadala. The perfect word of Allah. Allah says, Ibrahim alayhi salam started arguing with us, meaning Allah, for the sake of the people of Lut. Is Ibrahim alayhi salam okay with their sins? No. But is Ibrahim alayhi salam still loving and caring to every single human being, regardless of their sin, regardless of their religion? Yes. This is the religion of Ibrahim. And this is our religion and my religion and your religion. And today, when we, you, so many Muslims, when they see a non-Muslim, ah, kafir. Hm. You know, we, I want to live in an Islamic environment where everybody around me is Muslim and I don't have to deal with these kuffar. Astaghfirullah, so many kuffar here, so many kuffar there. 
And we look at the non-Muslim as some kind of a disease that maybe one day Allah will get rid of this disease from this earth. Ya insan, ya mu'min, ya Muslim, listen to yourself. Allah made you a believer for the benefit of those people. Not so you can hate those people. Not so you can want destruction for those people. Allah sent you as a mercy for them. You as an act of love and care for them. That's what Allah Azza wa did. And so he says, he started arguing with us about the nation of Lut. And when Allah Azza wa says that, Allah stops. And Allah says, about this discussion, he pauses and he tells us something about Ibrahim alayhi salam in Surah Hud. After he says, يُجَادِلُنَا فِي قَوْمِ Lut, He tells us three qualities of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He says, إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لَحَلِيمٌ أَوَّاهٌ مُنِيبٌ no doubt Ibrahim is three things. He truly is Halim. The first word used is Halim. The second word used is Awah. And the third word used is Munib. And this discussion I want to have with you, this conversation I want to have with you, is really about these three qualities of Ibrahim alayhi salam, because the qualities of his personality are supposed to be the qualities of the personality of every Muslim who follows the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The first quality is Halim. It comes from the, word, the, word, the Arabic word hulm, or hilm even. Hilm is actually used originally for, you know, some animals get very fat, like a cow that gets very fat, okay? Or any animal that gets fat, or a person that gets really fat, and their skin is very soft, and the baby animal lies down on it like a, like a pillow, and they can lean on it. This animal is soft on the outside because of the fur, but also soft on the... Inside, when something is soft on the outside and on the inside, it's said to be halim. Now this is important because there's a difference between soft on the outside and soft on the inside. You could give charity to somebody or do, you know, sometimes people do, uh, uh, you know, help the homeless, help the needy, but they do it to show public, you know, public support. Oh, the Muslims have helped these people. It's going to be an article in the newspaper. There's going to be a video about it. Make sure it's posted on Facebook, okay? We help these people. Or we went to see the victims of that group or that group. It's all on the outside. But hilm actually means the outside is actually less important. The inside is more important. You have a gentleness and a softness. As soon as the cameras turn off, here you are, you know, you're helping some child in these, you know, you know, you know dilapidated villages. They're helping some child holding a child while the camera's on. As soon as the camera's off, put the baby down. Let's go. <laughs> That's not halim. Genuine love and care and softness towards others is halim. And in the ayat, who is he caring towards? He's caring towards people that are not believers. He's caring towards who are not believers. And then the second quality, he says, Allah. Allah comes from ta'awwuh. Ta'awwuh actually in Arabic means when you are crying out of pain. You know, when someone does this, <sighs> Like they take a sigh of sadness. That's actually called ta'awwuh in Arabic. Awah means he used to feel the pain of others. He used, to want, he used to be sad when somebody else is destroyed. It would hurt him that somebody else is going to be killed. It would hurt him that somebody else is going to be hungry. This would personally hurt him. He had a sensitivity and an empathy towards others. This is his second quality, awah. And then the third quality, alayhi salam, is munib. Munib meaning he keeps turning back, meaning turning back to Allah. When he feels that pain towards others, that pain towards others draws him back to beg Allah. Not just beg Allah for himself, but now in his dua and his prayers, he's turning back and asking Allah for those that he feels pain for. You know, whenever you feel pain, you make dua to Allah, Ya Allah, heal me. When a mother feels pain for her child, she makes dua for her child. She turns back to Allah. The word munib here, after halimun awah means, first he feels softness and gentleness and care and concern for others. So much so that it makes him sad, it makes him roll with tears. And that rolling with tears makes him turn to Allah and ask Allah for their betterment. Beg Allah for their, for their goodness. This is the quality of Ibrahim alayhi salam on the inside. Inna Ibrahim la halimun awahun munib. These are the qualities of our father Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now think about this. For the Muslim today, we have this idea that the world is divided into believers and disbelievers. Muslim versus kafir. Muslim versus kafir. And the idea that Muslim, we are supposed to take care of our own, we're supposed to take care of the Muslims, that's priority. Kafir, who cares? You know, 
When you study the Qur'an, you find something else. When you study the Qur'an, Allah Azza wa criticized, for, for example, when, when the Qur'an was first revealed, early on, Allah Azza wa told His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, رَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يُكَذِّبُ بِالدِّينِ فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ الْيَتِيمِ وَلَا يَحُضُّ عَلَى طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينِ Short surah, everybody knows it. Have you seen the one who denies the religion? He pushes the orphan. He pushes the orphan. يَدُعُ الْيَتِيمِ And he doesn't encourage feeding the poor, feeding the helpless. Do you think that yatim in that ayah was the Muslim yatim? When the Prophet ﷺ was in Mecca, who were the orphans? The mushrikun, the kids of the mushrikun. Who were the miskeen, the people who were poor and begging? Were they Muslims? No, they were miskeen everywhere. When the Qur'an came and said, the people who cheat other people in business, وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا اكْتَالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتَوْفُونَ وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمَا وَزَنُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ Allah, just, Allah curses the people who cheat in business and they give people who buy from them less than what they paid for. I paid for two kilos of rice, you gave me 1.75. Allah curses those people when they cheat people, their, their customers. But those customers Allah was talking about were not Muslim, they were anas, people. Quran came to defend people. When Allah Azza wa Jal says, you know, وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ When the baby girl was killed, buried alive. They, that's what the mushrikun used to do. They used to kill the baby girl and bury her alive. That baby girl was born in a Muslim family or a mushrik family? She was born in a mushrik family. And Allah Azza wa Jalla stands up for her. In other words, the Qur'an from the very beginning taught the believer to be concerned about the pains of everyone else. The pains of everyone else. As a matter of fact, when we stand up as Muslims, as an individual, that's how as an individual we should be concerned about everyone, Muslim and non. But as a community, as an ummah, when we raise our voice, every other group is different, we are different. This is the last thing I'll share with you. You know, in, in the United States we have different, they call them lobbies. They call them lobbies. There's an Irish lobby. There's an Asian American lobby. You see? There's an African American lobby. And the Irish lobby will... Fight for whose rights? The Irish. The African American lobby will stand for the African American's rights. The gun rights lobby will only stand for the gun rights. But the Muslim lobby isn't supposed to stand for the rights of Muslims. Actually, in the spirit of the Quran, the Muslim is supposed to lobby for everyone else. For all the orphans, for all the poor, for all the needy, for all the victims, for all those that are suffering. Because we are khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas. For the benefit of people. That's our place. That's what we're supposed to do. But if we become like every, what Bani Israel did, Banu Israel thought they're the chosen ones. And the only ones we have to benefit ourselves. Everybody else, you know, I guess Allah didn't choose them, they're lost. And until they become Muslim, the only thing we should do for them is make da'wah to them. If they become Muslim, then they can join our team. Otherwise, who cares? What's the point of helping them in this dunya if they're gonna burn in the akhirah? This is the sick mentality some people develop. This is not the mentality of that, that Allah Azza wa Jal teaches in the Qur'an. Allah says, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُرًا We feed you, we give you only to make Allah happy for the face of Allah. We don't want any compensation from you. We don't want anything in return. You know, other religions, sometimes they go into villages and they feed the poor people in hoping, hoping to convert them. So they'll give them food, they'll give them clothing, they'll build a school for them and then turn them into their religion. Da'wah is something else, helping people is something else. We don't say, I'm going to help you, but make sure you read the Qur'an now, or you make sure you come to the masjid. No, no, we don't put pressure on people like that. لا يكرها في الدين You can't force people into the religion. You can't even pressure people into the religion. Helping people is a separate obligation. Making da'wah to Islam is a separate obligation. Those are two very separate things. They're completely separate things. And they should not be confused with each other. I wanted to share this with you because we have to, we, the, the, the words we say about our religion, that we, that we are the best ummah, we don't stop at the best ummah, we gotta finish the ayah. That you're the best of people, you're best of all nations for people. You're the ones who encourage and command and instruct to do good, good for all. And you forbid evil, evil for all. And you're the ones who believe in Allah. You're the ones who believe in Allah. So our iman in Allah should be, make us more concerned for everyone else. This is a month where the shayateen are chained. Every one of you, you're living, you, you're living in a society where the majority of the people in your society are not Muslims. 
and the non-Muslims should know you to be Halim. They should know you to be Awah. They should know you to be Munib. Because that is the legacy your father left you, Ibrahim alayhi salam. May Allah Azza wa Jal help us embody the qualities of the noble messenger Ibrahim alayhi salam and help us fulfill the obligations we owe to Allah Azza wa Jal in our deen. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayat